First of all, can I ask for any apologies for absence? Just show you that comes to the day. <clears throat> okay. Um, apart from that, everyone else looks like they're here, so we've got a full house. Um, second item is obviously declarations of interest, and that's just a standard <coughs> reminder that if there's anything either now or at any period during the meeting that um, a declaration of interest needs to come from any of the members, please don't hesitate to indicate that we can make sure that's recorded accordingly. Okay, third item <coughs> is the minutes of the last meeting, and can I read the minutes of the last meeting um, held on the 1st of September, the <coughs> correct record if that's agreed? status ratings uh, are based on the data in Appendix 1, which is also rated now with uh, RAG, uh, in the same way that the, the priorities are to. <coughs> if you go to page 12, <coughs> obviously we're at quarter one, probably collecting quarter two. You'd expect in quarter one perhaps not so much activity in terms of things being completed, but we hope that things are on track and nothing has gone off track so early on in the year. Um, there are a couple of uh, red ambers in there, but I think most of those are to be expected. I've also spoken to Shane about some of those, and we know why that is and where it's at now. Um, so I don't think there's anything huge there that, that, that would cause uh, an issue from, from what I can see anyway. Also, just to let you know that the RAG status that we have for the different corporate priorities and the strategic activities that build up those priorities, um, we've now put in uh, how many activities kind of make up each of those strategic activities. So if you can see that we've rated, just for, for an example, uh, on the first one underneath number one, the strategic activity, leave and support to strap up the north, etc. That's rated as green. That's rated as green is made up of three other activities that were all as green. So we kind of use a formula to decide what the overall track is. So it's not just 
it says there's some support activity updates. What some of these include are some of the day-to-day -day core functions that we deliver alongside the priorities. <coughs> Obviously, the priorities are the priority big activities for that year, but we're also all about the standard day job work and the travel needs to conduct to the business. So we've got some of those uh, in, in a separate section on their own. This is also a living process. So as we go through the year, things change. So there'll always be things that we add in, perhaps to remove, but just as we go along, because we don't just stick rigidly to exactly what we've said. There's a need to make changes, etc. Um, I mean, currently, business planning for 2017 is ongoing. So any comments that you have from these reports are very uh, welcome so that we can inform how we set up quarterly reporting for next year. So we're all welcome not only to challenge on some of the information within the report on what we're presenting and how we're presenting it. And just the last thing to mention, which was a request from previous committees from last year, so we've applied it to Q1, uh, is that in the appendices, so appendix one, we have the KPI data, so that's page 27 of your report. We have always presented the information, but not really give it any kind of rating in some circumstances. So a request from committees previously, we have made a red and a green assessment of some of the KPIs. A lot of the KPIs we cannot directly control, uh, therefore, I don't know, originally we thought it might be slightly unfair, but KPIs, we can influence the direction of travel that they go to as well, so we thought we'd red and a green then. The only way we could red and a green them is if we had some kind of target really to say whether it so we've suggested throughout uh, the document, mostly in the left-hand column, uh, where we think could be decent, uh, ambitious targets uh, or, kind of, or things that we should look to try and achieve, not tie ourselves to. So then we can read and agree where we're actually up to with those. Um, I'll leave it at that point. So if you've got any questions on any of that, um, just ask away. If I can answer them, certain will. Uh, otherwise, we'll take them away and get answers back to you. Any questions or comments you want to raise? You have answered my thought in the first time, not to the bench.
this uh, report perhaps is to force a lot of this financial year. So uh, with the agreement only being signed in September, there's a lot of commitments that we've had to go back and review what can be delivered now by the end of 16-17. So what this, what this reflects is at that time that agreement was not signed at the end of quarter one, and therefore the activity sitting behind that agreement were read out with it, but they were not progressing uh, as we had initially intended. That's, that's what's going on. Uh, I think adding to that as well, because the agreement now has been signed, for quarter, <coughs> certain quarter three, which we are now in, that traffic light colour will change up to what? In terms of delivering customer insight based improvement to marketing, again that's Amber Green. Um, it says a plan of improvement have been produced for areas identified in terms of customer research. Again, it would be helpful for us to know because as bus users, as customers ourselves, it's helpful to know what initiatives there are in terms going forward. questions that can't be answered in this chamber, we will ensure that you get a, a, an update as soon as possible from the relevant office of the uh, got, um, John, then I've got Ken from Pensley. Thanks, Chair. Thanks very much. Uh, back to page 11, please. Thanks very much. Uh, in terms of punctuality, page 4, this morning we've got an update. Obviously, it was, it was a couple of courses ago, and I just wanted to make, actually make progress with the punctuality issue there. I've got a number of and information due from uh, Salmon ITS that, that would allow that operability issue to be addressed. At the moment, we're still waiting on uh, information coming in to uh, Gary Evans, who's our interface on this particular issue. And, and to the best of my knowledge, that outstanding information has not been as yet. So the current position is, I would say, that we've got outstanding information coming in from this point. So we'll get back to this one. Yeah, I can bring that back, but that, that's the information. Okay, next Questions on page 13. Thanks, Chair. Develop a, uh, deliver, this is uh, yeah, item two. Deliver a customer focused alliance with commercial operators with all parties. So there's nine activities, three of which are currently read, two are amber read. Again, I'm just wondering what sort of progress we've made since quarter one with that. And then the second question on that page would be the second amber red one, which is deliver financial savings within the support of bus network by increasing the number of services. Again, can you give us an update on progress on that? to me, but with signing that agreement, um, certain work streams were progressing, so punctuality, reliability, that work is continued on the basis, even though the agreement wasn't signed until September, and to a large extent, the bus services review programme has been able to progress up to this position. In terms of the other work streams, I'm, I'm thinking more of uh, smart cars and marketing, clearly there's impacts on that, so that work stream has not been allowed to be progressed until we've got the Multi partnership agreements, and we need to work through that. So, the, so those delays are, are still in there. In terms of the uh, red amber of the network reviews, yeah, we've started when we've done these reviews. It takes quite a bit of time to look at the net benefits of the, the bus service review to get the actual figures of what you've actually gained in saving. So, what I would say is our, our assessment is, and our commitment is, that we will secure uh, five million over the three years. I think uh, up till the end of last financial year. We've made good progress on those predictions, but in terms of the safety of it, it can often take three or four months. 
you want to settle down and see the net saving financially that you can actually provide financial figures for. So I think the overall view I would say we're on schedule for five, five minutes, but that will detail it. what did we get out of COVID, do we give you need for the time to, to get those figures come in, you know, those net benefits rather than the gross benefits that you were predicting. Thanks, Shane. There's some further questions on page 13. This is for priority three. Um, maintain the safe operation of emerging tolls for ensure and continue to improve tolls operate from infrastructure. I'm sure the amber red is, isn't indicative of the fact that the toll isn't safe. I'm just wondering in terms of the way you can give us an update on that, please. And then the second question on the same page is maintain the safe operation of emerging ferries. Again, so there's much else actually detail on the part of the press as well. The self actually is sort of cancelling. I think it's self evident what's happened to that one. So the first question, I think, system, uh, what we have is um, a bespoke supply for the toll system that we're, we're looking to do a refresh. There are some indicative negotiations on what that refresh would be. When they did the uh, submission for the refresh, it came in at a higher cost and a longer program than anticipated. What we've done is we've uh, had probably about three to four months of protracted discussions to get to a proposition that is affordable. And what we had in the budget going into this year of uh, was 2.3 million. Uh, and those figures were just about 3 million. So there was negotiations to go through, which we're coming to the end of, but it has delayed it, and that's why that is the amber red. Thank you, thanks, Joe. It's on that point, Steve. Well, it, it's just a follow-up, but don't think you, you answered the question. If I was a, a member of the public looking at the narrative, this, this report is all about safety, and it's not. It's about efficiency, similar to fairly so just to reiterate that point change the, the language in, 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 the, in the prefix. And just to note, uh, it sounds like this is a bad report, but we really need some questions. It, it's an excellent report, uh, and we are half a million underspent as well, which is also good, because we don't know what financial problems may come out of autumn statements and the like. So, so we are in a good financial position, uh, and the KPIs are indicative, uh, and many are related to the bus lines. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.
Are there any further questions on the report? If not, um, can I move that the recommendation to paragraph two is agreed? Excellent. Moving on then, item five is the motion travel final accounts for 2015-16. And Sarah Johnson, who's our new head of finance, uh, will be presenting the report. We can all give Sarah a very warm welcome to Mosey Travel. Accessible and, and readable 
our accounts are, and you know, it's really is a great step in the right direction. <coughs> now I only need to sit down for half a day rather than three days to try to get to the bottom of all the figures, and I think that's really important, not just for us as members, but actually for the general public to make sure that we're open with transparency and absolutely have the figures that we're presenting aren't just accurate, but they're in a way that kind of people can digest. Um, I think actually the best uh, bit about the report is the external auditors report appended to it, and which does highlight the fact that we've got an unqualified opinion. That's always what we're looking for with public accounts, and I think the fact that it, it says it in the way that it does is as, um, as helpful as we would want. Um, I also think it's great how they indicate uh, we're doing very well on value for money because that's what it all boils down to. We spend taxpayers' money and whether we spend a pound or we spend a million quid, we want to make sure we get the very maximum impact for that. And the fact that we're being accredited by our auditors, um, that we are on the road to continue achieving that is really, really good. And I think the final point that I would want to make is just, um, it is flagged up uh, about the issue around public inspection and the blue remiss of me not to mention, um, and I'm not simply in a negative sense, but in a positive sense, Mr. Brace's um, query that he raised about how we need to make sure that we do display things uh, publicly. So thanks for flagging that up to make sure that we continue to improve accordingly because we want to make sure that we're as open and accessible to the general public that we serve. Harry, you've got a question. With all of that in, in mind, if I can then sort of uh, move the recommendation in paragraph two of the report, if that's agreed. Item six is Mersey Travel's multi operator ticketing scheme and it's the annual fares review and list. Thanks, Chair. This report that members traditionally consider uh, around this time is going to link with the requirements in relation to the rail industry and um, assessing prices for the what I'm asking members to consider this afternoon is the recommendations from Mersey Travel in respect of what the um, prices should be for the Mersey Travel multi operator prepaid ticket scheme. Just to remind members, Mersey Travel is a, a voluntary scheme that operators participate in. Um, it's multi operator tickets, like Solo and Rail Pass, um, which is mode, also rail, and then we have multi mobile tickets like Trio and Solo.
in this year's undertaking for the university transport vehicles people, uh, and a lot of, of that service work getting 50 percent of these staff um, fare prices, fare tickets uh, up to a young person's 19 and 30. Slightly more complex with the young person schools school and um, term time for school year tickets, and we are seeing that 35 percent uh, of the Apple tickets. Uh, our concern is that if we uh, push the operators on that one, they may be <coughs> Maybe choose not to participate, and that would not be advantageous and would not be to the benefit of the customers who use that product. So that's why we're still recommending still um, providing some relation to that. The, the second one is that uh, in looking at Safeway, we are proposing that we have a price freeze on Safeway um, for, for common data. In 2015-16, we have seen a decrease in, in the whole prepaid pot, um, and that is based on Thing for the customer, but Safeway has seen a significant decrease of over two million pounds of revenues. Just to remind them, this is what our revenues and money comes into as a travel, we apportion it that and it gives up to the operators. Um, but um, based on that, um, we, we feel that it, it would be um, in the interest of the customer to actually freeze Safeway prices before the coming year, uh, and that's what we're therefore recommending. Um, all the other ticket prices are um, roughly on the to it members do, uh, obviously uh, considering the support for the recommendations, we will have a structured communications engagement and marketing campaign <coughs> to ensure that the are aware of what the new prices are and we are looking to do some specific focused activity around the same way product. Um, but the final thing to say is that we are obviously continuing to look at different prices to ensure uh, that we consider the requirements of your people um, and that is obviously what people to receive. Ten times if it's strange because it's sample products and it's young person's products, but it's in line with what we've agreed. Um, so it's up to currently in 
the ones that will happen in spring 2017 is that linked to some of the questions members asked earlier on sort of slippage on the bus alliance work streams because that required the, the legal agreement with the contract to be signed before the operators were prepared to commit uh, and that obviously then links to the smart ticket program in terms of taking that forward. Um, I think it's fair to say in terms of a one zone for rail it, it's slightly more complex and that's because people travel, tend to travel on a, a large geographical area for rail and there's a lot more point to point travel, station to station travel um, so there's been some modelling of that that's ongoing but the concern is that that could uh, disadvantage some customers um, because costs would increase considerably on some ticket prices so we're just looking at uh, how we can manage that and take that forward but certainly the proposal is that we'll be moving to a one zone for, for bus tickets which hopefully will support people's uh, travel horizons and encourage people to choose the, the bus more and hopefully um, help to achieve the, the growth target that we've got on bus. I think it's fair to say on of the alliance before we signed it that moving to a one zone actually for minimal increases for people that currently have a single zone ticket there will be massive reductions in cost for those people that have multi-area tickets and also it will um, as Liz says massively kind of um, raise people's travel horizon and get them a better deal and I think one of the things that is also worth mentioning with regards to this report as well is that um, it's great that our tickets are still only going up in line with RPI. Um, that's something that we've always been sort of keen to ensure is the case. And one of the things that we do have is one of the best value multi operator, multi mode ticketing schemes anywhere in the country. It genuinely is the envy of other city regions. Not to say it's perfect, there's always ways we want to improve it, but I suppose one good example of anecdotal information that we have uh, is particularly around young persons um, stuff and what we've achieved. Cars. Um, Transport for the North a few months ago held an event for young people across the North in Huddersfield. And that event started with almost a round robin of different young people in different parts of the North of what you have in, in your part of the North. Um, it ended up getting to a stage where quite a lot of young people from the wider North were very envious about what had been achieved in the city region in terms of discounts, in terms of my ticket and all those other elements as well. Um, and I think that's not just the right thing to do because um, you know, it's that social justice argument we strongly, strongly uh, believe in. One of the things that we haven't had the numbers confirmed yet, we're looking forward to when those do come about. What we've got for young people, we are being told a significantly increased patronage of young people as well. So, absolutely, there's a very strong business imperative to all this as well. It's not just doing the right thing by young people, it's getting more people onto buses, which obviously translates some more fares in, in the fare box. So with that, I do think it's always important that we kind of make the mark in regards to the term time tickets. One of the strengths about our young person's offer is the fact it's a 50% discount. I appreciate it's not always the easiest straightforward to get that, but if we can make sure we're regularly pushing back to the operators to say, actually, it works in all the other areas, you've generated a lot of new kind of uh, passenger growth that you haven't had before, why not the term time Thanks, Chairman. I think it goes without saying, although it must be said, uh, it's thanks to not only this committee, from the officers, but also the operators as well. Now we've reached this bus alliance, you know, to congratulate everyone involved, because it has been a huge, long, drawn out, sometimes not quite bloody, but near enough, exercise to get people on board to offer a better service uh, for our people on Merseyside. to the, the phasing for the works and the disruption and the mitigation It's a summary document. There's a lot more information, but let me take through the report. So the purpose of the report is to inform members of the proposed works planned between the 3rd of January and 18th of June 2017, 
And it's to replace the sub track and underground loop in Liverpool on the uh, cross river sections of the Royal Line on the Mersey Rail network. The Royal Line itself was opened in 1977 and it, it, it linked three existing city centre stations and the Royal created an underground local network which provides quick and easy access across the city and allows passenger interchange and link it to the Royal and Northern Lines. In March, 2000, this, in March this year, Network Rail and Liverpool City Region announced a £350 million programme of investment in the Liverpool City Region network. And part of that covered, in effect, 10 schemes. Key aspects of that was the Slap Track Works, which is the, is the base of the report, Lime Street, the Ford platform at Highton, Weaver Rail to Resignaling, and of course covers the uh, three growth deals, Holton Kirk and Gold North and Newton and Willows, which are currently under development for delivery. Within the section of the uh, rail line under the Mersey, there's a 1.2 kilometre track section that now needs replacing. A lot of the infrastructure is past its timeline, and this is to seek to address that, and in advance of uh, the rolling stock decision, what happens in rolling stock, to get the infrastructure up to a standard that's suitable. It also sets out a, a considerable future timeline before we come back to and, and seek to have to do any work uh, on the stretch that we're, we're talking about here. Alternatives were considered, there was three options actually, in terms of the current proposal, which is three phases over a six month period, or a series of possessions over two years, or weekend possessions over five years. The primary influences around the work itself is it's a significant amount of breaking out of all the substructure below the track and then to replace, cast and reconfigure that track over 1.2 kilometre length. The environment itself is quite challenging. It's a four metre diameter bore. It's 40 metres below ground level. Quite harsh conditions and the ventilation and working are quite critical.